Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to worship this morning here at Bethany. We are blessed to have you with us. This is a very special day. We have, uh, obviously, it's Pentecost Sunday. We also have two baptisms going on. And as I mentioned last week, we also have a youth car wash going on outside as well. So if you have your car here, you can get worship, communion, coffee afterwards, and a car wash all at the same time. What a deal. So head on down after worship to get your car washed as well. Um, But welcome to Jackson's family and to Bob's family who are both with us today as we get prepared to do your baptisms. We do have time and talent surveys available, so check those out. Those are at the welcome desk. If you have not filled one of those out, please do so. We are having a shirt, t-shirt decoration contest. We are looking for the best um, decoration logo, if you will, for 150th anniversary t-shirts. So there's a box on the welcome desk. If you would like to put in a design of some sort, we would love to see it. I keep threatening that if nobody does that, you'll end up with my stick figure. So somebody please turn in a design of some sort. And then Vacation Bible School is coming up. We have almost 80 kids signed up for Bible School. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. We still have registration going on, and we still need volunteers. So if you are interested in volunteering, um, you can talk to Mark, you can talk to me, or you can call us during the week in the church office and check in with us there as well. Finally, if you have purchased a geranium or geraniums, you may pick them up after the service today. Um, please see an Alter Guild member to have your name checked off. So who would that exactly be? Who are they looking for? Ruth, Ann, Jackie? Ann and Jackie? Okay, so you've got four different people to talk to. So um, Dorothy, Ann, Jan, and Jackie, and Kathy are all available if you want to see them for your geraniums. Um, you would get checked off the list, just making sure you get the number of plants that you ordered. And uh, as always, thank you to those who ordered these. They made, this, this is beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So thank you to our Altar Guild for helping to set this up as well for Pentecost Sunday. We're going to start, so um, blessings first of all, Mark, you lost your dad this past week. Blessings to you and your family. We are going to start with a word of prayer. There were also two other deaths that occurred throughout the week in people related to, actually related to staff members. So I'm going to throw those all in there. And then we're going to say a prayer for Jackson and for Bob. We're also going to say a prayer this morning for the Sierra Pacific Synod, our brothers and sisters in the Sierra Pacific Synod in Northern California. Late last night, there was an announcement that their bishop is under investigation for misconduct. This has a very long story behind it, and I'm not going to get into that, but we do need to pray for our brothers and sisters in our sister synod in the Sierra Pacific. The Lord be with you. Lord, we give thanks for the gift of life, the gift of the Holy Spirit coming into our life and the way in which you bless us in so many ways. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the Sierra Pacific Synod. Grant them peace and comfort as they go through this process together. Bring justice where it is needed. We also give thanks for those who have gone before us, especially today we remember Mickey, Hubert, and Scott. We give thanks for their lives and their witness and the love that they leave with each and every one of us. And finally, we pray your blessing upon Jackson and Bob as they receive their holy baptism today. Grant them always to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray this, O Lord, in your holy name. Amen. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We continue with a lament. With Job of old, we cry out. Everywhere the innocent suffer. Our desires and efforts achieve us little. O God, you are good, yet nothing has changed. Our answers have holes, and we fall through. For what do we lament? For what do we come before God this day and cry out? For what do we confess? Hear us, O God. Show yourself, O God. 
give us life. Hear these words, receive their power. The majesty of God the Father undergirds all that is. The mercy of God the Son accepts our despair. And the comfort of God the Spirit embraces us in communities of care. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now continue with our gathering hymn number 400 in the hymnal, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
think the bulletin tasted better, right? <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. As they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from the city Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one had heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all of this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. There are so many ways in which the Holy Spirit is described throughout Scripture. In the Old Testament, we get things like the Sophia, the Sophia being the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom of God flowing into the world. Or, as Jesus referred to, the word we see in today's gospel says advocate. Well, the word that Jesus used in the Aramaic was paraclete, and a paraclete was a word for someone that was a lawyer or a teacher or an advocate or an interpreter. Think about all those different roles of the Holy Spirit. Lawyer, interpreter, teacher, mentor, guide. That was the term that Jesus used for this coming spirit into our lives. And then you get things like the Ruach. The Ruach comes up. It's a, it's a Hebrew word, an ancient Hebrew word. It comes up for the Holy Spirit very early on. It's in, the, it's in Genesis chapter 1. It's the, the wind that is hovering over the waters at the creation, at the start of creation. It shows up again later on when you get the dry bones in the desert, later on in Ezekiel and so on. But you have these, these references to the Ruach, the breath of God, the wind of God for the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is described in many ways. The breath of God, the great wind from God, the wisdom of God, the counselor or lawyer or mentor or teacher from God. These are all the ways in which Scripture describes the coming Holy Spirit to us. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. And then we have this beautiful imagery within the Scripture as well. The dove descending peacefully upon Jesus at his baptism. That image. The peace. God descending at baptism. Jackson and Bob are about to experience that. You get this divided tongues like a fire image. That's a brilliant image as well. The flames the Holy Spirit, like a fire. Or, the violent rushing wind. 
that we see in the book of Acts as the disciples are gathered in the upper room and all of a sudden, you know, we, we hear that, right? When a tornado hits, it sounds like a freight train. It does, by the way. Been there, done that. Um, but that, that sound, like a violent, rushing wind. So the Holy Spirit is all of these different things. This peaceful dove, these flames, the fire, this violent wind. And it leaves us to sit here and say, okay, so what exactly is the Holy Spirit? We have all these images. We have all these descriptions. And none of them really come out exactly the same as the previous ones. What is the Holy Spirit? I want to, I've always been partial, to be honest, for the Ruach, the great wind from God, the breath of God. Because wind embraces us, engulfs us, and it pushes us. I remember a, a day from long ago, 1998. In the fall of 1998, there was a huge windstorm that came through the Chicagoland area. You may or may not remember that. It was like three days of very heavy 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds, just constant. And at that time in my life, I was teaching. I was a teacher. Actually, I was working at Hoffman Estates High School that particular fall. And I had spent the day in a room working with kids and listening all day on the third floor to the, the different vents rattle above us as the wind was doing its thing outside. And I got home. And I, I walked into my backyard. I lived in Mount Prospect at that time. And there were three very large, old, silver maple trees in that backyard. And if you know anything about silver maples, they tend to be incredibly flexible trees. Right? And me being the 29, 28, 29-year-old guy that I was, decided, this is kind of cool. I'm going to go stand out there. See what this is like. So I literally stood in the middle of my backyard like this and just let that wind buffet me and the trees above. And it was the coolest thing because I literally did have to lean forward to stay. It kept trying to push me, right? And I did once or twice take a step back because the wind just was that powerful. And what was really cool was one of those trees that was right above me, I mean, it just kept folding down. It was the coolest thing. Of course, it wouldn't have been so cool if it had broken off, but it didn't. So it was the coolest thing. This tree just kept folding down, and it was like, for the first time, I could see the top leaves on this tree because they were just folding down towards me. And just kind of like one of those guys at the used car, right? But it was the tree instead, <laughs> just waving all over the place, over my head. And it was just this cool effect. And I sat there and watched. I mean, it was fall. All the leaves had changed. I was watching the leaves just in droves. It was like it was raining leaves just go flying past me. And it was perfect because they were going in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> I was like, keep going. <laughs> just keep going. This is good. <clears throat> but it was this this feeling of being pushed and engulfed and embraced. Like it was hard to take a breath because the wind was so powerful that you'd go to take a breath and you found yourself short of breath, like trying to take that deep breath. And just this, this power, this raw power it's just circling around. And every time I read this 
verse from Acts. And it starts out saying this, this violent, rushing wind. I start thinking of that wind. That the, the Spirit moves about us with such raw power that it can leave us breathless, that it can push us, that it can make the world around us swirl before our very eyes. That's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes rushing into our lives. The same Holy Spirit that can also descend upon us with a peace that we can't even begin to describe or even imagine. I have to tell you, one of the things that has always stood out about that moment, and, and mind you, I did not understand any of this at that time in my life, but within two months, I was shifting from being a teacher to going into ministry. It was only two months between that day and me shifting from teaching into ministry. Now I would tell you, what a cool Holy Spirit moment, right? Back then, I was just a 29-year-old going, wow, look at this wind, this is awesome. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit pushes us and swirls and embraces us. and moves us in new directions even when we can't imagine what those are about to be. I love that image. All of us make up the body of Christ. All of us make up the priesthood of all believers. All of us have a calling many of them actually throughout life. And when you put all those things together, some incredible things happen in the world. I have taken groups on mission trips places and had to do things that, you know, carpentry, rebuilding after a tornado, carpentry work. Yeah, no, not me. I'm, I'm very good at saying that should go there but I'm not necessarily going to be the guy you want to hand the power tools to. <laughs> Something bad might happen. <laughs> Actually, a couple of weeks ago, there was a gentleman here visiting, an old friend of mine that came here from Aurora. He and I used to go on a lot of mission trips, and jokingly, he gave me a big sledgehammer the day that I left his church in Aurora. And it, he, he gave it to me, and he said, I'm giving this to you as a reminder of the trips that we went on. Please don't ever use it. <laughs> <clears throat> so. But the people that came with us on those trips, like Greg, were actually very talented at building. And so they were perfect. We had people there that could lead we had people there that could sit down with folks and interview them and ask them what they needed next. We had people there that could build. We had people there that literally their entire job was to measure. We had other people there that their job was to answer phones at a hotline. We had other people there that their entire role in being there was to feed, off, feed all of us who were working out in the field. The point was that when you put us all together, and we came from all these different churches, by the way, from the ELCA, the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church, from the Southern Baptist Council, from the United Methodist Church, from Catholic Charities, when you put all of these things together and all of these people with all of these different talents together, all of a sudden we actually were the body of Christ working in the world and changing the world for the people that we met. That is the work 
of the Holy Spirit. The guide, the teacher, the one that pushes us in new directions to do things that we didn't think we were capable of ever doing. And yet somehow, some way, we figure out how to do it. Because when you put us all together, and the Holy Spirit moves through all of us, we can do some miraculous things. And it's pretty cool. It's very cool. I sat, in Minot, North Dakota, I sat with a guy whose house had flooded out. He had had this, this, this story. This poor guy had had a heart attack three weeks before the flood. Had had open heart surgery, came home, and his house flooded. So he and his wife got moved into a FEMA trailer. If you've ever seen a FEMA trailer, they're nothing to write home about. But anyway, they're living in a FEMA trailer, and myself and this group from Aurora, Illinois, is there to rebuild their house. Now, the thing is, this guy had worked in carpentry his entire life, but he could no longer do this. Physically, he couldn't do this. So, anyway, in the midst of, I have to share this part of it, in the midst of this conversation with this guy, he's got this really cool tattoo all up and down his shoulder. This is in like 2011, 2012. And it was this really cool cartoon duck thing, right? And I, I'm out there talking to him one day as we're taking a break, and I said, I got to tell you, I love the cartoon duck tattoo that you have on your shoulder. And he laughed, and he goes, in Vietnam, it was a snake. <laughs> I've grown older and wrinkled a little, and now it looks like a duck. <laughs> but... This guy sat there one day with me in tears as he, he fed us. And he just said, I can't believe that a group of strangers from a state seven states away would come and rebuild my house for me out of nowhere. I looked at him and I said, the only thing to do in return is do it for somebody else someday. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. To go out into the world and change the world. The Spirit brings us peace. The Spirit pushes us and moves us in directions. The Spirit gathers us together and embraces us and puts our talents together so that we can literally change the world around us. And we really can change the world around us. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> That's the thing. I know that over the last few weeks, it has been incredibly... Okay, who am I kidding? Over the last several years, it has been incredibly discouraging to watch the news. I was going to say the last few weeks. The last several years, it's been incredibly discouraging to watch the news. And there are moments where you sit there and say, when, God, like we lamented at the start of worship, when, God, will this stop? Well, you're right on cue, buddy. We're <laughs> lamenting, and now you're... <laughs> you are right on cue. <clears throat> but the thing is, the Holy Spirit moves and blows like a violent rushing wind and pushes us in directions. And we can't help but respond. And we end up changing the world around us. And in changing the world around us, we bring about a peace like a dove. Or the wisdom, the Sophia. Or the paraclete, the counselor, the advocate. Or the fire that burns deep within. 
that fire is hope. That fire is hope. So no, I really don't need to know how to describe the Holy Spirit perfectly. I just need to know that the Holy Spirit is moving. I'm being embraced and pushed. We're being gathered together. And somehow the world is changing. Even if we don't always notice in the moment. Come, Holy Spirit, come, flames of fire, come, hope, come, ruach, come, wisdom, come, violent, rushing wind, and change the world around us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you were able for our hymn of the day.
congregation may be seated. Today we gather for the baptisms of both Jackson Blaine Heldman and Robert Dale Nikoloff. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, which is the mystical body of Christ in the world. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Mitchell and April, do you present your godchild Jackson for holy baptism? If so, say, we present Jackson Blaine for baptism. Mindy, do you present Bob for baptism? If so, say, I present Robert Dale for baptism. Okay. Troy and Melissa, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Jackson Blaine baptized into Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. As you bring Jackson Blaine to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with certain responsibilities to live with him amongst God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nur nurture him in faith and in prayer, so that Jackson may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and for the world that God has made, and work for justice and for peace. Do you promise to help Jackson Blaine grow in the Christian faith in life if so, answer, we do. we do. Mitchell and April, do you promise to nurture Jackson Blaine in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help Jackson live in the covenant of holy baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, we do. We do. People of God, do you promise to support both Jackson Blaine and Robert Dale and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Please stand as you are able. At this time, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all of the forces of evil that defy God? If, say, if so, say, we renounce them. I renounce. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? I renounce Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Okay, you ready, buddy? We're up. Come here, buddy. Gotcha. Hi. That's Adam. Say hi to Adam. 
I'm going to take this because there's people listening online. Next in blame, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you had your way, you would climb in there like a bat. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Jackson Blaine with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. So come, buddy. Jackson Blaine, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. We're going to light a candle. <laughs> Ready? Are you comfortable here? Okay. See that? Jackson Blaine, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Microphone off him. <laughs> Come on up here. You don't hold me? No, I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> Robert Dale, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Robert Dale with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Robert Dale. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Now we're going to light your candle. Whoops. Cindy, can you get that? Thank you. Sweetie, you can hold that. Robert Dale. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the family and friends of our baptized. Let them ever rejoice in the gifts that you have given to them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for both Jackson Blaine and Robert Dale. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with him the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us welcome both Jackson and Robert. We welcome, welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Now let's give them a hand. <laughs> you. This is for you. Make sure I do the right one to the right camera. There you go. There you go. Blessings to you all. You may return to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Doug, this is you. <laughs> we can now continue with the prayers of the church.
set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, first open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, and by your spirit, Bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We continue this morning with our offering.
stand as you are able. Let us pray, merciful Father. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exults in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> God, mighty Lord, gracious Father. Endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all of creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this, the end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to the giving of his life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has first taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All are welcome. The congregation may be seated.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.